Welcome to our show. It's important that we recognize many of the activities that go on in our community, and in particular the personalities that help us resonate many of the issues that are important. One of the people that I can say has been dear to my heart has been someone who has really put her life on the line. And in particular, when it comes to women, there is a particular type of way in which, you know, we should feel dedicated and obligated and committed to ensuring that they're safe and whatever their goals are, are manifested so that it can really become part of their lifestyles. One of those individuals has been really great for me in my communications interest. This young lady is Lisa Durden. Lisa is not only on my camera crew here at Cablevision, mm -hmm. but she's also been someone that I've been able to confide in and talk to. And now she has been involved in a number of different things. I'm sure you, the viewers, have noticed a number of trending activities in the social media dealing with Lisa Durden and some of the ways in which she has been able to use this ability of challenging her communication skills to showing that there are some problems that we need to face. Now, I just learned today that Lisa Durden <laughs> is going to be running for Lieutenant Governor. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> unbelievable. Please welcome Lisa Durden to the show. Uh, thanks, Herb. <laughs> Listen, ooh, um, Lord. I have to uh, tell you that uh, it, is, it is fantastic in finding out that Terrence Bankston, who's sitting next to you, is going to be part of this campaign uh, is really exciting. Terrence, you have been someone who has really advocated on your level in terms of the millennium because you're younger and you're more vibrant and you've been actively involved in raising awareness about issues. Knowing that you're going to be part of surrounding her with the kind of confidence that she needs to take on this role is very important. Why don't you share with us exactly who you are and why are you involved with this program with her? Yeah, Terrence, why? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll, I'd probably rather start with the, um, with the why. Um, to me, um, public service and, and civic engagement is something we're obligated to do. Volunteerism is something you're obligated to do. Unless you're simply, you know, I don't care where you go to for guidance. Some people go to the, the um, the Quran, some people go to the Bible, some people go to other spiritual things, some people just go to morality based standards. And when we focus on those, it's always still common to the things that I grew up learning in the Baptist church. It wasn't about being per perfect. It also wasn't about um, trying to be the word. It was finding yourself in there, mm -hmm. in the word, and mm -hmm. knowing that there's in imperfections mm -hmm. in that. And, and part of what I've always, um, saw Lisa do as part of what we shared coming here in the car and I told her that I, and I teared up saying this and I had to tell her why I was tearing up. Mm -hmm. I said it's because I am so full of, it's not excitement. Black folks are known for getting excited. We're mm -hmm. known for getting passionate about things we're excited and passionate about. Mm -hmm. We're often, you know, even pushed to feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. This is not excitement. This is not just passion. This is this is somebody who walks the walk and talks the talk. This is what when I go around to community meetings and when you talk about the things I've done, I've I've I've, I've been active in my community in this community since I was 16 years old. And it wasn't because of who my daddy was. It wasn't necessarily because of who my mama was, but it was because of other leaders and pillars in the community like you, and I told you this, mm -hmm. who saw something in me even then and said, you know what, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna try to control it. I'm not going to um, discount it, devalue it. Um, when people talk about age, I talk about Malcolm. When people talk about age, I talk about Moses. Um, we talk about putting our best foot before us. But clearly enough, this is something really off the radar. I mean, I, I woke up in the morning and then I'm seeing Lisa <laughs> on national TV debating over an issue that we are very passionate about when it comes to black people. And then as a woman, really seeing her stand up and get mutilated in many ways by the media. And now you're running for 
a statewide position. It's, it's incredible that you can be able to transcend in so many layers at such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And I can agree with you in terms of the kind of caliber that she is, Terrence. Mm -hmm. But Lisa, are mm -hmm. you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, her. Don't answer that. <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> She's learning already. <laughs> I did not have sex with that woman. Um, no. Um, yes and no. I mean, not crazy, like certifiably right. crazy, but uh, yeah, I guess it's a little crazy to um, jump off of a cliff and do something that you've not ever done. Okay. Um, and to take it very seriously because it's something right. that you've been called to do. And, you know, Terrence will tell you, like when people start, and you know, you're you're uh, you know a man of, of faith. Mm -hmm. When I've heard people over the years say, "I was called to be a priest," "I was called to do this," I'm like, "What the heck are they talking about?" Like, really? I wouldn't say it to them, but I would be cynical in my head, like, like really. Now I've got to eat those words. Who because called you? They said I was you I was literally called you and figuratively called. You, you realize your faith <laughs> so, has really taken a real major so, credibility. Of um. And now I know what that means. So I was literally called okay. by, uh, s not initially Seth uh, Capperdale for okay. governor. Um, I was literally called by his uh, campaign manager. Okay. When they saw me on Tucker Carlson show speaking truth to power okay. about Black Lives Matter and the right for Black Lives Matter to have a safe space where they were having a private party to celebrate black folks who are still here with us and some who have been slain senselessly right. uh, by uh, racist cops and, and many other kinds of issues and ills mm -hmm. that happen to us in our community. So I went on there to, to uh, as an expert in the field of race, to not necessarily agree, because I mean, we all do things differently, but to defend their right to have done that. And so, so you were not a spokesperson? Not at all. Okay. You know, no, no more than when you see these uh, legal analysts come on TV mm -hmm. and talk about these high-profile cases like um, uh, Bill Cosby. Because I kind of wondered why black issues are resonated in the right. way that it is right. by individuals that they target. Right. And then, Who, Fox? And then, well, mm -hmm. right. And then mm -hmm. the organization itself really didn't come out and be supportive to what it was you were doing. Oh, they did. Black Lives Matter, they did. They did. Yeah, so um, so let's say, for example, the the, the, o, the O.J. Simpson trial or the Bill Cosby trial, you have political analysts mm -hmm. who speak about these high-profile cases like the current one now with Bill Cosby, and they might be on any show talking about, well, Bill Cosby's you know on trial, and here's what it's going to take for the prosecutor to win, and here's what it's, what's, what's going to take for the defense attorney to win. It doesn't mean that they're connecting with rape a rapist. It doesn't make mm -hmm. them a rapist. It's mm -hmm. their expert opinion because they are lawyers. Go on. Okay, so as an expert in the field of pop culture, politics, and social issues, mm -hmm. I will go on shows as an expert and speak on these topics no differently than any expert, mm -hmm. Nancy Grace or anybody. Now, in the, it, it could be a Kim Kardashian's ass. Mm -hmm. Is it real or fake? Well, that's my opinion because I don't know her. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm talking about the reboot of a show, is it a good idea or not? Should we bring Roseanne's show back or not? It's always those fun topics. So those fun topics are more my expert opinion because I'm a student of pop culture. But when it comes to black issues in particular or matters of race, I'm not just an expert. <laughs> I am in the club. Right. So I'm an expert and I live it. So when I am on shows about matters of race, I have a particular experience because I live as an African-American woman. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was there doing both things. So I went there to speak the truth, not an opinion. It's the truth. So I talked about white privilege, the white privilege card. I talked about how, you know, when I was asked by Tucker Carlson, and he said, well, you know, so are you saying that if a white person had an all-white day, you know, it would be okay? I said, you have all-white day every day. Mm -hmm. You don't say the words because it's politically incorrect. Nobody's going to say today, you know, white entertainment television. Right. Nobody's going to say hashtag white girls rock, you know, because they would think that one would think they were racist, which I wouldn't, but I'm just saying they wouldn't feel that that's politically well, correct. it's not necessary because it is a majority. Correct. And the majority are <laughs> Right, you don't have to speak the obvious. The so they're obviously, mm -hmm. right, you know, white America is white America. Well, racism is about, and, and, and this is something, Lisa, I'm yeah, sorry, that You're I've going. learned in our community, particularly amongst my generation, so say from two, 1982 mm -hmm. to on, mm -hmm. in terms of the millenniums, we don't, enough of us, and even some older folks I'm learning, don't understand the difference between being racist and prejudice. Mm -hmm. People can't be prejudiced, don't mean they're racist. Mm -hmm. Right, Racist exactly. is when you use your power. It's, it's almost impossible 
for African Americans or any minority to be racist. That's why when mm -hmm. they say reverse racism, it's, it's ridiculous weird for right. black folks right. or people of color because racism is about mm -hmm. using your power to, and to your oppress. prejudice to and oppress. to oppress. Right. We don't have the power. Right, to oppress. To oppress. And frankly, if I had the power, I wouldn't want to oppress anyway. We're still trying to recruit anyway. from the oppressor. Right. If we had the I power. I wouldn't want to oppress yeah. anyway. Blacks are so, known as the most forgiving race if we right. really look at the electorate and we talk right. about and we look at history. So, so we look so, at where we are and yeah, where so, you had to argue your position. Well, yeah, I was there. I was on the Tucker Carlson show to but debate the thing about again the topic. Is that it just catapulted into mm -hmm. another issue mm. when it comes to the workforce mm -hmm. and how we are treated mm -hmm. as African Americans? Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit okay. about the transformation of what had happened in regard to your representation and now what really builds the platform for you to need a voice to have mm -hmm. on a statewide level. Mm -hmm. That's what we're calling it now, transformation, not being it. fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after I was on the Tucker Carlson show, and I've been on Fox many times, so let me just kind of uh, let you know that when I'm, when I'm on Fox in particular, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Kelly Files, Megyn Kelly's old show, and Dr. Fox Oz, and Friends. Been on no, here. I'm saying Fox in particular. Fox I've been on many other shows, okay, but Fox right. in particular, whenever I've been called on that network, whether it be Fox and Friends, uh, the Kelly File, and now the first time going on Tucker Carlson, I've only been called to talk about matters of race. Okay. Because they feel like, you know, they want to have a balanced audience. Yeah. When I'm on the Dr. Oz show or Pix11 and other networks, you know, CT style, it could be fun topics sort of, but whenever I'm on that, it's always matters of race. So when I'm called by the producers, right. I will sometimes turn them down. Okay. And sometimes I will not. It depends on my feeling and passion toward the topic. I felt this particular one was an important topic to discuss because I wanted to bring context to why, how, um, um, uh, Memorial Day got started by African American people who were former slaves that decided to celebrate Union soldiers who helped us get our freedom and people p kind of threw all their bodies into a grave and didn't care about them because they helped us sure. become free. Wanted to represent his right. Name. So on Memorial Day when Black Lives Matter had this private party, I right. felt like I could bring context to that conversation and, you and did. shed light. Well, I did to yeah. most, but you have a small faction of racists who racist trolls who didn't well, they like were it. No, no, they, they were looking for. No, no, they were looking for. Um, what right. do you call it? A uh, uh, you know a, a sound bite. Right. They was right. and they got it. Or no, no, no. They got it. Or for they someone got it to they acquiesce to against what no, 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 Fox was looking. Or someone to no. disagree to whatever he was saying. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Not, right. They were yeah. looking for that sound bite. Who was looking for the sound bite? Fox News. No, Fox News. Let me just very for for folks watching. I like to correct black people. Fox News didn't do anything to me. Okay. I'm not. I'm not somebody sleepwalking to Fox. Okay. They send me a car. And I go, and they okay. send me a car and bring me back home. The producers call me and book me like any other expert is called and booked on a but show. But you don't think that they were They're able to Fox, get something that made no, the news worthy? No, 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 no. They wasn't. I write they wasn't my, why would they want I you write on that my show if they wasn't points. looking for something no, newsworthy? No, no, no. I, it was already newsworthy. Fox News was going to talk about that subject because by the time they called me. And they were me, looking for something. No, no, no. They weren't looking for something. Fox News wanted to have this conversation about this all black right. Memorial Day celebration that was already out into the media and they wanted to discuss it. It was already there. They were going to discuss the topic. It's a pop culture discussion. So I decided to accept the invitation to have that conversation. I understand. They asked Black yeah. Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter turned them down, which I'm glad that they did because ima imagine talking to Black Lives Matter, how that would have been. So I went on there as just an expert in the field of race. So they were, it was, it was not edited. It was a six minute, six minute segment. Tucker Carlson had his points of view. I was speaking facts. We were split screen. We were having a debate. I was out of there. Fox News was on to the next segment. They did not care. So Fox News didn't have a problem with Lisa Durton coming on there. In fact, they even invited me to come on Fox News about two weeks after that to sit on a panel to talk about Donald, Donald Trump and how he's doing as the president. I turned okay. on because I didn't want to get shot in the head. Go on. Okay, mm -hmm. we ain't doing that. We ain't crazy. Okay. So just to let black folks know, Fox did nothing to me. Okay. After that appearance that went Whatever. outrageously viral, about 18 million views, I've been on Fox many times and it never went that viral. Um, my employer, Essex County College, two days after that appearance, suspended me. Mm -hmm. Then about three weeks after that, they, quote, quote, uh, fired me. Mm -hmm. uh, they 
said Lisa has to leave. I made no mention of the college when I was at the appearance. I never talked about I was a professor. So according to um, the president, Anthony Monroe, Dr. Anthony Monroe, he released a statement about three weeks later in the paper saying that he didn't say it was the reason. He just made a statement saying that they've got they got immediately after my appearance on Fox, they got calls from faculty, students, parents and prospective students about Lisa Durden and something else he said. So, and he didn't say, and this is why we got rid of her. Well, you're fighting so, that. Right. No, 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 wait. We'll talk about that. So my point is, I don't know who these people are. Because if you look out there, that small faction of white racist trolls are the only ones that were talking negatively about me. The faculty and, and students there started a uh, fa uh, educators, and educators and faculty uh, united to reinstate Professor Lisa Durden. They started a petition that has almost 2,500 signatures, not just from New Jersey, not just from Newark, not just from the United States, from around the nation, U the UK, um, Canada, New Jersey, around the country, and they're from all races. So these people came forward. We've, we've had, they've given um, press conferences, and people have physically come saying we are for Lisa Durden. Terry. So there are more people who right. are for me than against me. So Why do you think that is so? Yeah. In terms of? Why do you think that there is this groundswell of support in relationship to her fighting what has happened to her as an employee? Uh, the dismissal of Professor Lisa Durden. Okay. Well, <laughs> Texas County is supposed to represent what Nork is. And um, many of us know <laughs> that are familiar with it, that it's not controlled. Um, by locals in Nork, even it's Essex County College. Is it? Is it it's just Essex, Essex County? It's ex it, 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 and people come from different counties, obviously, okay. just like mm -hmm. people go to Union County, blah blah. blah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're in our culture, you're in our city, mm -hmm. and we are the largest city in this county, and clearly, a lot of I've directed as the former director of the North Youth One Stop, where right. I took it to number one status okay. in the, for the first time in 20 years. Right. Um, we introduced the first um, high school diploma program, because it's no, call, no longer called the GED, for those that don't know that. Oh, really? It's no longer called the GED, because it's biased to mm -hmm. minorities mm -hmm. on resumes. Mm -hmm. And so we have to learn that. So it mm -hmm. is called a state-issued diploma. When you drop out of uh, high school, which you're eligible or, or legally able to do at the age of 16. Mm -hmm. And so as an administrator with a limited budget, I looked at that and said, you know what? Why are we waiting for an answer? Let's see how we can carve out. Instead of giving X amount of dollars to these um, external agencies to be staff heavy versus st uh, student or youth, you know, services driven. Right. Um, let's create our internal programs and see how that work and be our own internal customers and external customers at the same time because a lot of the people that work for the one stop are sec are in fact the people who need the services right. as well right. they don't necessarily have sustainable careers or employment or those that provide opportunities for mobility right. based on the people they place to live there so, and so um when we t um one of the things i felt compelled to do based on what Exus county represented is to create a program that would allow high school dropouts to complete the state issued diploma, formerly known as the GED, to complete their requirements, but while they were doing that, they were also earning college credits. Okay. They didn't know that because we didn't want to intimidate them or overwhelm them. They what would happened? find it out at the end and they're like, wow, I will continue and mm -hmm. go on to do that. But what happened? That's what that college is supposed to represent. Meaning, right. that to me right. is what that college represents. It's what Norkers right. and local folks and local leaders put into it. But tying it and into getting out what of it. we're talking Tying into yeah. here is it's totally contradictory of what that represented. I see. Mm -hmm. You and are champion for the first at-risk program to right. provide state issue and college diplomas for the most at-risk youth. And the first thing you do, um, there was no process associated with this. This is me not speaking as somebody mm -hmm. who's my cousin or who's my uh, publicist or somebody who mm -hmm. I support. This is someone who's true to process. That's how we got to number one. That's part of the point. I'm joined to that. But you. also, 
you obviously embraced this program and need, you didn't create the program yourself. You mm -hmm. you didn't think of it. So you in terms of her situation that. and how it really reflected yeah. on the problem, it was policy, and the policy really didn't. No, it's, it's not, not just no, policy. It's not, it's it's not po regard. hold on. It's not policy. There's no policy that says I don't have a right to free speech. That's right. I was put out that building right. because I was being punished yeah. for the right to free speech, and I spoke freely on Fox. I had nothing to do with the, the college. I said nothing negative about the college. I right. said nothing about the college at all. So they actually uh, took away my right to free speech and they uh, dismissed me for it. Now, here's the thing. Right now, my lawyer, um, uh, uh, Leslie Farber, is looking at my options. So that right. is out there in the hemisphere. However, um, when I mentioned earlier that I was called to this candidacy as lieutenant governor with Seth Capperdale, I was called because I saw the injustices now knock at my door as well again, exactly. okay. again. Now, so and, now, and I want yeah. to, I want to tell you that that yeah. is important yeah. about this whole relationship. That's why I was on, I was on Fox only, about injustices. Well, again, and yeah, not, only, also, not only were you a targeted individual because of the influence and because of all of the media attention that you've been given, but because you really can be a voice for mm -hmm. that concern Who and, and show me? some relevance in terms of the Green Party. I was going to no, 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 uh, doing any kind of campaigning for the Green Party prize? No, the Green. So when I said I was called to well, run, that's what I'm trying to say. Though. No, right. I got you never saying. was involved in a political. No, 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 entity. no. Uh, how did they? No, know she you? has right. been involved how, in how did, how did, no. how did right. they know you to call you? Right. So the Green Party, because they're about social justice. Right. That's one of the main things that they're about, social justice. They've been around since the 80s. But why would they call you? Because they saw a person on Tucker Carlson's show that didn't mind saying what she had to say and so speaking you, truth you to power. So you fit their I, I fit image. very much into their, not, not image, very much into their mission. Hold on, very much mission. into their mission. Okay. And they felt like this was a person who's very strong, strong. That can uh, help build their not, platform. Not help build their platform. They have, there's no platform, it's their mission. They want somebody who Why can compliment that, that. their mission? I can't answer that. We got to go back decades. Ho hold on. Some people, some people have missions. That's, your company has a mission. Everybody has a mission. I can't ask a person why they chose that mission. It's something near and dear to their heart and what their passion is. They have a passion for the underserved, a passion for the least of us, a passion for those people who have been marginalized. That's their passion. To ask a person what they, why they have that passion, you'll never have, a, have an ending to the conversation. Today. But. But, today, but today. I fit the passion because I've been doing it for years. Today. So they seeked me out because I compliment that passion. And that's how I said I was called figuratively and literally. So they physically called me. I didn't say yes right away. But then I was called just by virtue of what I do in a figurative way, not only literally. Well, on the same level, today, obviously, mm -hmm. you know yep. that uh, Speaker Oliver was asked to run with mm -hmm. Phil Murphy. Mm -hmm. And we're still waiting to hear who the Republican contender is going mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down now on a statewide level, mm -hmm. and nationally, because right. it's really gonna come to a point where as, as long as you're able to raise the money to be in right. the debate, right. that they're gonna see two African-American women mm -hmm. for the first time running in that position. Mm -hmm. Do you really see that to be a challenge? of having to have to debate against another woman of your pretty much you know, same that kind question of interest? Right, that question alone is going to be a common question, and it just is a ridiculous question. Nobody asks men, do you have a problem with two white men running for this? How do well, you no. feel about that? Well, because do you the have fact a problem that it's historic. It, no, no, no. It has never I, I happened. understand the so significance. Not, I mean, like, if it happens, like, for the next 10 years, no, no, no. I, I, I understand that. the significant, significance of the possibilities, but for me to think that way, I don't think that way because nobody thinks to ask men this. So am I going to think I'm sitting next to Sheila Oliver, I'm going to think, we're two black women talking. It's not going to mean anything to me. We're candidates, but we're running, that. and I we're said, going what, to be. What do you think in terms of it being that way, though? I'm not thinking think anything about, about it. I think I'm not thinking anything. I think no, hold on. I'm not thinking anything about that because I'm going to look at it as we're both there running no differently than men are, and no one's going to ask them to think about that. Okay. So I'm not going to think anything about that other that's, than that's, that's what we're I running. Wanna, I want to be clear we're about it. And yeah, ahead, I'm sorry. It. We're but, candidates, mm, and that's what I'm going to think about. But Terrence might think something differently. I think that we should put it in a political context. One thing that we don't do is have conversations around 
real conversation around politics. A lot of these people mm -hmm. that we discuss, we know. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about Exus County politics, and let's, then let's talk. Let's talk about Exus County Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about most Democratic parties. This is not personal to anybody. Let's talk about the culture that exists there, and then let's talk about why the Green Party was even created. Mm -hmm. Because the Green Party historically takes more votes away from the Democratic Party than the Republican Party or the Independent. Why? Because a lot of the values have to speak mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the, the struggles people. of mm -hmm. those that why Line A was created in the first place. Mm -hmm. Line A was not created to in this day and age to just um, to cap or to hinder or to um, restrict African American leadership from growing and developing in this country. Well, and you know, so what, I, I knew that I'm, I was going to have a tough time. This is not, I, this I, not I, tough. This no, is no, 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 many of our viewers would be able mm -hmm. to get a chance to see you, understand mm -hmm. where you are, and we'll be looking forward to some other opportunities mm -hmm. that they can hear mm -hmm. someone develop a rapport with you okay. on this particular issue. I'm very proud of you. I I'm appreciate very it. I'm very proud of both of you, simply because of the fact that I've watched it and mm -hmm. you have been my good challenging what questions. You're doing. People and are thinking. I want to continue to make sure that you are aware that uh, we're going to be working with you to help develop what is a grassroots opportunity, which is what we believe that oh, you're well, really looking that. for. Oh, I appreciate that. Okay. And we want to thank you all for tuning in. Oh, man. It's over. And we'll be looking forward to the next <laughs> opportunity to talk with you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. for inviting me. <laughs> yeah.